In the previous lecture, we discussed the differences between unit and integration tests and strategies for automation of these tests for your projects. Now it's time to talk about the inevitable action that comes after thoroughly testing your code with unit and integration tests, deploying the app. In this lecture, we are going to talk about continuous delivery, which is a concept that we have already introduced in the first video of this course. Continuous delivery is the practice of automating the steps of building software until it is deployment ready. Deploying the software to production happens only after a manual approval, which means that there is an additional layer of control that requires a human to give the deployment a green light. A typical continuous delivery pipeline looks something like this. It builds and runs unit tests. It deploys the app to a stage environment runs integration tests, then waits for manual approval, and finally deploys to production, if approved. A continuous delivery pipeline ensures that the code is consistently tested, allowing bugs or errors to be detected faster. It speeds up production cycles and makes repetitive tasks automatic, to reduce the number of human errors that come with manual work. The final push of the button, however, is still in your hands. It's a perfect approach for projects where timing the release to production is crucial, or if you want to have a final look at the test logs before releasing the newest version of your code to the customers. Let's see how you set up a continuous delivery pipeline in Buddy. For our app, we are going to use the React.js counter introduced in the previous lecture. As our deployment target, we are going to use Heroku. First, let's start the pipeline off by building the application and running the unit tests. As you probably remember from previous lectures, it's as simple as adding a Node.js action and adding the right commands to run in the actions terminal. If the unit tests pass successfully, we will deploy the application to a staging environment in Heroku. Let's focus on Heroku now for a minute. To deploy our application there, we will need to create the staging and production environments, which are apps in Heroku terminology. Let's create both production and staging environments while we're at it. Just sign into Heroku and select Create New App. Then define the name. Names have to be unique, so the common ones such as stage or prod are most likely taken already. Then choose the region for the infrastructure. When ready, Click Create App. With both environments created, we can return to Body. Let's add the Heroku action then. As you can see, two actions show up when I type Heroku into the Actions search box. The one we want to use here is the one listed in the Deploy to IAAS category. When you first add a Heroku action to your pipeline, Body asks you to authorize the integration. Click Authorize with OAuth to authorize with your Heroku credentials. If you are signed in to Heroku in another tab, chances are that the authorization will happen automatically. To configure the first Heroku action, I will just have to make sure that the application, our environment, is the staging one. Take note of the integration dropdown just above. This one allows you to select from different Heroku accounts linked to your body workspace, which might come in handy when your project grows. Then I'm going to add a Node.js action that runs the integration tests. These could, for example, be cross-browser tests, which you can set up to use the application deployed in the staging environment. Next up, let's add a notification action. Once the integration tests run successfully, this notification will go out to the specified people and will let them know that their attention is required to deploy the application to production. But how exactly do you create this stopping point for the pipeline? In Buddy, it comes down to adding just one more action, which you can find listed as wait for approval. Pipeline execution stops at this action and waits for approval from a specified user. This is the very element that makes this pipeline work in the continuous delivery model. After this action, I will add another Heroku action, but this time I am going to make it deploy the application to my production environment. Finally, I think it's a good idea to add another send notification action and send out information about the successful deployment to production. You can add notifications for other channels, such as Slack or Telegram too, if you wish. Transparency is king. 
Now let's trigger the pipeline and see it in action. I am going to push changes that I have prepared beforehand. They are changing the header of the application. As you can see, the tests run successfully and the app is deployed to my Heroku staging environment. Then the integration tests kick in. As they finish running and find no errors, the pipeline goes to the next action and sends me an email notification. When this is done, you can see that the wait for approval action changes its status to waiting for approval. It will sit there waiting patiently for my approval. When it does that, I can check out the application running in the staging environment or have one more look at the test logs. Now all that's left to do is clicking that approve button. There we go. Here's my app deployed to my production environment in Heroku.